Kimberly cooking up Le Mans, knowing the crap out of everybody. And we got Tony once again rocking the JP. So let's do this. Tony Key versus Wow. Tony really wants the offensive right away. Because one thing about this match, like one thing about JP is that other than this counter or any of his supers, like speaking one at a time, it's just that if he's forced to play defensive, he really cracks. You guys who can keep you on the de off defensive the whole game if she gets started, Kimberly. So it's just a matter of how can Tony keep only key out, and how can only key get in and stay in? Yeah, it's one thing about these events that you do see a lot of the same characters every night. Okay, the X teleport, both are in burnout. But only key has to make a lot of room in here because JP is at half health, not gonna matter. Shimmy. No, he confirm off the crushing medium. So we're gonna have to confirm off of this. Uh, didn't complete the combo, but it doesn't matter. JP is in the corner, out of the corner. Ooh, wow, knew that teleport was coming and just got the double deuces. Alright. Now, only key has to get some offenses started. And you're gonna do it. If you go to level three, you gotta get the music over right and get the power up for the next round. Very nice, last pixel kill. So, the reason why you see Kimberly's go from their level three so fast is that they like the power up for the following round. I forget what exactly the power up does, but it is nice to have. There. Good answer from Tony. <laughs> Oniki's not afraid to spend anything. If Tony's gonna cash right away, he's gonna firm. This actually might put him in a burnout. I think he's gonna be burnout after this. Yep, right on cue. Very nice cross under there from Oniki. It's your time. Time to shine, Oniki. You gotta make a count now. takes in the game. Alright, so game one goes to Tony, and we're going to see how Oniki adapts. Because like he was getting some offensive things started there, just that Tony could get that one, that one opening and just close it out. Jumps out of there, basic the counter. And here's the offense Oniki needs. Ooh. Great counter, but it doesn't matter. Just gonna eat him out of there. All right, good stuff. Only he gets game or gets the second first round on game two. <laughs> what I confirm from Tony. Nice. Okay. Back at full screen. So how are we gonna get in there? Only he's gonna do that. But wow, that was a, I, I. We all got hit by that. On deck. And that's a dead Kimberly. God, that's that super so brutal. Alright, so final round here. He does a set point here from Tony. So it's good zoning here from Tony. Tony keeps taking his time to find the offensive. The X counter. Doesn't really get too much off of it. The jumping roundhouse is so mean from JP. Uh didn't didn't kind of work out and now you're 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 dead.
Good stuff there from Tony taking it over Oniki. Yeah, I think in that matchup he just kind of wanted to control control the stage, essentially control just just do zoning because Kimberly gets in and then you're kind of SOL. So my pants are coming down. Sorry, my awesome T-shirt. Anyway, good stuff there from Tony. Going to be moving on in the loser side. So, up next looks like we got Shimizu, who was playing uh, during Miami. He was playing... I forgot who. Well, he's playing Exert versus who was playing the modern loop. Yeah, like, uh, like think about Street Fighter, think about Gil and JP. Both of them seem like they come from like another game. Like, Gil's like an RPG villain. Like, he's always talking about like status effects and Illuminati. So he comes from a different, totally different game. And JP also feels like more like a uh, like an RPG villain. Anyway, 